Hi, and welcome back to Thai TV. Today I'm going to show you a shrimp fly, which is probably the fly that I fish with the most when I'm targeting sea trout on the coastline. Throughout the years I've been tying loads of different types of shrimp flies. It's been pure hackle flies, it's been spay flies, it's been uh, chenille flies, all different types of flies. And this fly I want to show you today is more or less a smash up of all of these flies combined. I love fluorescent, I love uh, realistic flies, and I like movement. And by combining all of these types into one fly, I, I get a fly which I believe in 100%. So um, let's get started. This fly is tied on a partridge saltwater shrimp. I tie the most of my flies for sea trout on a partridge saltwater shrimp. It's a good uh, hook for loads of different things, um, shrimps of course, but also bait fish and, and a lot of different things. And I like my flies to be uh, quite big. So I actually tie more on a size four hook than I tie on a size six. Um, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna tie it on a, on a size four. So uh, let's get started. Here I'm using a, a vise from Marc Petition, very good one, which is fully rotatable and there's nothing in between so your hands get stuck or anything and it holds the hook very very well. You see it's it's not falling down when I'm, I'm pushing it quite hard. So a very good vise. Uh, attach your thread and just go all the way down to the hook point here and let it hang straight down and cut the uh, extra off. First we're going to tie in some, some mouth parts uh, and for that I'm going to use a mallet. If you want to be very, very good and you should actually peel the feathers off. But I'm a bit lazy on this fly so I'm just going to pinch it together like that in one bunt and tie it in like that. Pinch it and tie it in. It's probably about one and a half centimeters from, from where my tying thread is hanging down. Pinch it like that, put the thread through your fingers and just hold it and you go down loose and pull it. And then you know it's situated on the top of the hook. Once again, open up like that, perfect. Now I want to cut the extra part of the feather off the part I'm not, that I'm not going to use but I want to use this part of the feather as a build up for the fly so I want to cut it almost the, the entire length as the hook leave a little bit of space up here and I'm cutting it a bit from the side so I get a, a tapered so I get more a feather up here than I get down there so it's going to be tapered down into a piece of the body on the shrimp and just tie it down and by keeping all of this, you're going to get a very durable fly that's not going to fall apart. Yeah, that's the mouth part. Then I want some antennas and some something to bring it alive on the back of the fly. Here I think there's no material in the world that's better than a spay hackle, uh, a real spay hackle. And as you can see, this is one is actually been very well used but in one of these you could tie I don't know hundreds of flies if even with only one color and it doesn't look much when it's on the hook but when in the water it spreads out and it's just the, the movement in these kind of feathers is just unbelievable I'm gonna pick a f feather that's middle size this is a medium ginger color and here you can use you can use red you can, or pink green you can use whatever you want as you can make hundreds of different variations on on this fly here you got the feather hold it down here and trim off the last part of it just like that you want a little bit of this soft feathers to stay on here it's this people think differently I guess um, some don't want it to be too long and some don't really want it to be long I prefer it to be quite long, so you get this extreme slow, fine mu movement on, on the fly. So I got a quite long feather, but that's a little bit up to you how you want it to look. Tie it in underneath and keep 
the same length as you had with your, with your mallet. Trim it off and just tie it in. And go back halfway. Then we want to hackle this. Find the point. And just turn. This is okay if this looks quite messy to begin with, because we're just going to pull it back later on and, and everything's going to be situated where it's supposed to be. So just start trimming it down, or tying it down, like that. Good crush on top of it, just to, to hold it down a bit. And remember the longest the longest hackle feathers, or uh, the longest fibers on this hackle is in the middle of the feather, so you need to, to use almost the whole feather to get get everything out of it. Oh, oh. that hurts. Pull it back whenever you turn. Like that. That's good. And we're just going to secure this one. Like that. Dun, 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 dun. That's it. Trim it off. So now this looks a bit messy, but I'm going to pull all of it back like that. All of it. And I'm just going to hold it upwards, pull it up so I get more or less all the materials on top of the fly. So I'm going back with the thread on the hackle and keep pulling it up all the way back to where you tied in your, your mouth parts. Like that. Spread it out a bit. Here I actually go down, around once, just to lift it up a bit and back in. That's it. See if it's perfectly spread out. It's, it's all right. The next step we want to do, we want to have a little bit of dubbing here. Just a little bit, because if you start with the next step, uh, you very often it's going to get a gap and I want to just close that gap. But as I want a quite realistic fly, uh, I don't want it to be too much colored, uh, too heavy fluorescent colors. I'm actually going to mix up two different types of dubbing. SLF, saltwater dubbing, uh, two types I'm going to uh, mix up. One is called Fluor Chaturas and one is called Tan. Uh, and by mixing these up, you can actually tone down the chatras color, but still have the fluorescent uh, functionality from the dubbing. Starting off with the tan, just take one bunch, like that. And then, not entirely as much of the fluorescent chatras, but almost like that in between your fingers and just pull them and put them on top of each other um, and just mix it until you're quite satisfied and we want the colors to combine so we get more or less one color sometimes it's easier not to take all of it at once that's okay and now it's toned down it's not that extremely gr green one as it were before but if I take the lamp and place it on the dubbing, it still reacts a lot to, uh, to, th to the UV light. So we go back, we just take a little bit, dubbing. Up. And just make a little lump, a little, little piece of dubbing here. Pull it a bit. It's not too much. That pull the, the rest off. Then I take my dubbing brush and just pull it out a bit backwards so you'll get it to to stand out a bit. Like that. Perfect. Next I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some nylon or fluorocarbon in 4X, quite thin, because I want a very thin uh, rib to the fly. I'm just going to always take a long piece of, of nylon or something similar because you want something to hold hold on to. You don't want it to be too short. It's just going to slip out of your hands and it's going to be be a nightmare to, to, to rip the fly. So take your, your nylon or your fluorocarbon or whatever um, and just tie it in. Some 
very nice turns here. All the way back to to your dubbing point. There you go. Another thing I really like in my shrimp flies, uh, and you guys have been watching before, I probably know this already, is po polar chenille. Um, you get a little bit of glitter and you got a good uh, tone to it. It's very alive in the water. Um, so I'm actually going to place a second hackle with this material. You could choose whatever color you want, but I'm going to go with an amber colored one, which I think suits this fly, or the materials I've chosen for this fly, very well. Cut off a piece. And I'm going to tie this in underneath as well. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to tie it in the full length, I'm just going to have the half of the length uh, again to build up the structure of my body. Tie it in, pull everything back, tie it down. Go. Then we go all the way forward with our tying thread to where the materials are stopping. Then we take this one, start wrapping it around the hook. One turn and always pull the fibers back. And then you just go all the way up, all the way up to where your tying thread is, is hanging down. Let's Go. Pull it back. Remember to pull it back. By doing this, you're, you're getting an extremely durable fly. I mean, I like to tie these these realistic patterns, um, and it's a, it's a joy to tie them, but it takes a long time uh, to tie them. And I really want to fish, so so I would rather spend my time with a fishing fly that looks good than an extremely realistic one. That's it, all the way up there. Tie it down. Cut off the extra. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pull all of this material back and we're going to go back with our thread and lock it down, keep it down. So it's we're going to force all of it back all the way back to that little dubbing lump you made. Um, here you can also choose yourself how much material you actually want, uh, how much polar chenille. You could trim it down, you can cut some of it off if you think it's too much. That's entirely up to you, but I'm, I'm going to save all of it here. The next part is adding rubber legs to this fly. Um, before, I've always been sitting and tying knots on a piece of rubber, making them or, and tying them in so they would be situated perfectly. And that have been sometimes been a pain in the beep. Um, but now there's a new revolution. These legs, they are easy to tie. They always sit perfectly and they are very, very durable. They won't get damaged after one fish or anything like that. They, they, they're going to last for a long time. And when you, when you got them situated, they, they are sitting there. I mean, it's, it's so, so easy to use these types of, of legs and you're not adjusting and trying to, to get them to fit all the time. They're just sitting there. These guys come like this um, and we need to cut them out before we use them. So I cut out every single leg. Like this. And here you go. One pair of shrimp legs. Easy. These actually comes with a super cool tail uh, on the legs. But I'm using a very big hook. So they are a bit, it's a bit too small for, for this hook, so I cut the tail off. Place it on top. And as you can see, there's, there's a stop in here in between, just where the four legs come together in one point. And that point I'm placing just next to my polar chenille down here. So I place it on top, just where my thread is. And I'm just going to go loose. I'm not going to put any tension on it, actually. I'm just going to 
just going to place it. Loose turns all the way up. Around the legs, all the way up, like that. What you want to do now is you want to make sure that your legs are situated perfectly. Um, so twist it and make sure they are straight. Sometimes it, you can still you can still get them to to twist a little bit, and I don't think that matters at all uh, actually. But it just looks a, looks a lot better if they are sitting uh, sitting straight. So now they are lined up as I want them to be. Then I need to tie them down. So now I'm putting pressure on, on, on my thread. Thread. Down. I'm just going to go zigzag back. Uh, if they will, if they are turning a bit, it's not the whole world because you could still adjust it uh, later. But make sure you, you pull it tight in this point. There we go. So now they're standing up a bit, I like that. Next up, it's also easy. Easy shrimp eyes. And these guys are actually one pair of shrimp eyes in one. So they are not going to twist, they are not going to fall down on one side, they're going to sit exactly the same the whole time. I've chosen a yellow one, uh, fluorescent. So I get a little bit more fluorescent uh, colors to it uh, that would glow up. But um, there's no pupils on them. So just to be a bit nerd, I'm going to take a marker pen and just paint black just a little bit. So just get a little bit of eye to it. And as you probably know, this is not necessary, but it gives the fly that little extra. That's it. So then on these uh, these eyes, there's one side that's plain, uh, one side here that's plain. That's and and it's a bit ridged or riffle, riffles on on the other side. So place them with the side with with the riffles and what you call it. Um, the side that you can feel, place that ups, upwards, because then it won't twist and it will sit there when you tie it in. As we spoke up before from the legs, there's a point right in here. That point is going to be exactly at the same point where the legs are. So they're going to be straight up and down. That's how I decide the length them. It's a bit too long, so if, if I tie this down the full length, I will not have any space uh, to finish the fly, so I'm going to cut off three millimeters. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, let's see, there we go. No tension. Just loose. There we go. Pull the materials up. Eyes out, like that. Good. And now we're going to tie it down. There we go. Like that. So, a little bit of super glue. And when you glue this, it's never going to, never going to go anywhere. And it's got to sit there forever. Um, just a little bit on top of it. It's more than enough. Back to the dubbing. Take your mix. Take your thread out. Need to. Doesn't have to be 100% dry, but still don't want it to be too too wet. That's it. Put it on the thread. All the way up and go zigzag again between the legs. Put quite a lot to begin with because we're going to brush it out um, later on. But here you can actually just pull the legs as you want, they're not going to go anywhere. And if you get some loose, some points where you can look, see through the dubbing, 
still the right colors underneath. It's a little bit tricky, but. Still sitting. Yeah, a little bit more. Just a little bit more. There. Going to leave a couple of millimeters here in front to to make the finishing part of, of the fly and the finished part. Um, I'm going to have some craft fur on top just to. to to get it all together. That's it. Let's see. That's all right. The last thing I'm going to do is going to I'm going to take some craft fur as a back to it. Here you need quite a heavy bunch because we're not going to use the on the fur, the fur from it. We're going to have quite a lot. And again, I've chosen a color, uh, tan, sand, something that that works with it. And I'm just going to take quite a big bunch and I'm going to pull off more or less all of it underneath and I'm just going to keep the longest ones that's it now it's very very thin in the top okay in the middle so I'm going to pull off the extreme long ones and I'm going to double it just like that That's okay. Place this one a little bit longer than your, or same length uh, as your polar chenille that's sitting here. Measure that in, like that. Pinch it between your fingers and straight down two times. Like that. Cut it off. Make sure it's in the middle. Tie it down. I can tie all over the, the whole head. That's it. Last part. Take our rib. Pull it down, the craft fur. And take your nylon a monofilament, all the way up through. Make sure you're not going to get tangled up too much. So I'm just going to go straight up with the, uh, the nylon. A uh, couple of millimeters in between, I'm going to make a nice back uh, for the fly. So that's it. And I'm going to tighten it down. There you go. Couple of nuts. Just That's it. And cut it off. Super glue. So we're gonna glue the whole back, and then you got an even more durable fly. Which is more or less never going to come apart. And then you can pull it up a bit in front, just to make it stand up a little bit better. Take a look at the eyes, legs. Everything is okay. Yeah, good. The last thing, um, oh, there's two more things. We want to brush it out just a little bit on the underside. Actually, only underneath, and just pull it back so we get a little bit more uh, translucent um, and a little bit more life to it. Just like that. It's more than enough. And then I'm a sucker for these marker pens. Uh, I just think by coloring the fly it makes it so much more alive and, and, and 
the things you can do with a marker pen uh, as a final touch is just amazing. And this this one I'm using at the moment is a brown one, a brown marker pen. I'm gonna give it a little bit all over. And if you don't want to do this, of course you don't have to. But I I just think it's a, it's an easy way to to get more live and give a more living effect to your flies. That was the brown one. And let's give it a little bit of blue and red on the legs as well. So I'm just making some small uh, points with just blue marker pen now. That's it. Um, Colouring the legs and a little, oops, a little bit of red. The reason why I'm using the blue and red stuff as well is if, if you if you look at the shrimp, uh, a real one, it's very often got this blue and red tone to it. It's very it's actually very clear in its colours, but very often you can see this blue and, and red stuff on the legs. So so I like to to give it just a little bit of of these colours. But if it really matters, well, I'm not quite sure, but it feels good anyway. Okay guys, that's it. It's done and ready for some action. If I turn the UV light on it, you can see it, it reacts, the fly reacts very well to, to the UV light as well. So there's loads of that stuff, but it's not that extreme green one uh, as you've seen me tie before. It's a more discreet version um, and it works. So uh, this one will probably be on my leader. No, it's not going to be on my leader because we're actually going to give away this fly for one of you guys uh, and please comment on where you're going to use it and why you should have it and if you'll catch something or just use it please hashtag uh, fly dressing um, so we can see if it works it would be fantastic to, to follow you guys and, and see what you're up to so uh, leave a comment and don't forget to hashtag fly dressing otherwise Get out there and catch something. Yes, okay. Hi and welcome. Hi, and welcome back to Thai TV. Um, today I'm going to show you a shrimp pattern, uh, which is probably the fly that I've...